Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about statistics and we're going to talk about different types of graphs and ways there are for collecting and displaying data. So let's get started. You can see on the screen that I have a couple of different kinds of graphs. I have the one at the top right. Oh, I can't point on here. Sorry. Um, but the one at the top right is called a um, just a table or a column graph and it's just listing information for us in a table format. That's like the gray and black and white one. The bottom left where it looks like there's colored columns, like colored little buildings, that is called a bar graph. And you notice that each of those columns is like a bar and they each stand for some type of data. On this example, I see people's names across the bottom, and then I see numbers going up the left side. So that means that those people did something with those numbers. Maybe they sold something, and that was how many they sold. So we would look at Daniel, and I see Daniel sold nine items. And I can look at Sophia, and I could tell Sophia sold the most, and she sold 21 items. Um, now the last type of table or graph that we're going to talk about today is the bottom right and it's shaped like a circle. So it's called a circle graph. Sometimes it's also called a pie chart. And the pie chart is used for, um, it's showing value out of a hundred percent of something. So if we have a hundred percent of something we can show how much of it is allocated to a certain portion of that 100%. So I look at that pie chart and they use the bar graph to make the pie chart. And so I can see that Sophia clearly has the biggest piece of pie. She sold 30%. So she has the biggest piece of pie. She has the most. And I can see that Daniel has the least. And in that pie chart, it shows us that he only has 13%. So those are some examples of the charts and tables that we're going to be using today. And I have one more that I need to show you that wasn't on this app. So let's see if I can get it pulled up for you here. Yes. Okay. So this is my line graph. Now a line graph is where we kind of plot points. Think about that coordinate plane. And this would be quadrant one in the coordinate plane because all of our points are positive. All I do is plot the points for all my data and then I can draw lines to connect my points or my dots. And that's why it's called a line graph. We can very easily see now when the numbers were up and when they were going down. Um, and you'll notice again that it's clearly labeled across the bottom of the line graph. It shows the months across the top or the left side, excuse me. It shows the numbers, which if I look at the top of the graph, it says produce sales in thousands. So I can look at October and I can see that the point in October is around 35, but remember it's in thousands. So they had 35,000 produce sales in the month of October. And we could go over to April. And if I kind of draw my line across from April, I think it's sitting around 25,000 produce sales for April. All right, so it's just taking data, taking information and displaying it for us in a visual table or graph. So let's do some examples from the book page 53 in your textbook. So if you'll please turn there and follow along with me. Let's look at number one. It says explain the appropriate use of each type of graph. So I'm gonna teach this to you now because you haven't learned it yet. So a circle graph compares parts to a whole. Okay, so circle graph compares parts to a whole. A bar graph compares different categories of data, and a line graph shows changes in data over time. Remember, that's where we could see the ups and downs of what was going on with the data. They're all useful in different situations, so let's keep going. 
So number three in the book says, describe ways in which a circle graph could be drawn so that it is misleading. So you have to be careful with your graphs and your data because sometimes they can be drawn in a misleading way. And statistics really helps us to um, figure out if a graph is valid or not and if it's written correctly. So a way to make a circle graph misleading would be that you could have your pi and you could have it divided out into some chunks and your chunks, remember, they're all supposed to add up to how much? 100%. So if I had a pi that did not add up to 100%, that would be misleading. I could have a pi that was more than 100%. I add all these numbers up, that's gonna be way more than 100. Or I could have a graph that equaled less than 100%. It didn't quite reach 100. So be really careful when you're working with your graphs and make sure that they are valid by making sure that they are starting at zero and adding up. On numbers four and five, it says there are 321 NCAA Division I schools. The graph at the right shows the sports that are offered at the most Division I schools. So they gave me a graph that I have to look at to find this information for numbers four and five. So number four says, how many more schools participate in basketball than in golf? So I'm gonna look at my numbers for basketball and golf. Basketball is 321, golf is 283. Remember, when it says how many more, it's asking me to subtract. So I'm gonna subtract these two numbers and see what the difference is. So I have 11 minus three, which is eight, and 11 minus eight, which is three, that was convenient. So the difference is 38. There's 38 more people in basketball than in golf. And number five says what sport is offered at the fewest schools? So fewest means least. So I'm going to look for the smallest number and try to see which school that is. And I see that tennis, and since this is a bar graph, it's easy to see that tennis is the lowest at 276. Okay. Okay, so for numbers six through nine, and I am still on page 53, please have your book with you. If you don't, go get it because you need to see this information in order to follow along with what I'm doing. It says, um, use the table that shows the number of foreign students as a percent of the total college enrollment in the United States. So this table is a little bit tricky because we have to convert the percentages to find out the answers that they're looking for. Because what they did is they gave us the country of origin where these people came from, and then they gave us a column that says total student enrollment percentage. And the percentages that they gave us are all very small. And so that makes it even more confusing. If it was like 7%, this wouldn't be so tricky, but because it's decimal percentages, it's like 0.04% of something, the math is a little bit more tricky. But follow along and you'll get it. There were about 14.9 million students enrolled in colleges in 1999. How many of these students were from Germany? So 14.9 million. First, I'm just gonna write down what that looks like. It's 14,900,000. Okay, it's 14.9, so we just put all the zeros in and it becomes 14,900,000. And they wanna know how many were from Germany. Well, the chart says that 0.06% were from Germany. And so I am going to have to do some multiplication to find out the actual number of students because they don't want me to give them a decimal they want the actual number of students based on the 14.9 million so i am going to have to move my decimal two places to the left in order to multiply and get the correct answer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this decimal two places 
so that I come out with this number, 0 0.0006, and I'm going to multiply that by 14,900,000. So just take your calculator, that's what I'm doing, and I'm putting in 14,900,000. Got enough zeros, and then I'm multiplying, and then I'm just going to do 14 point, ah, sorry, 14,900,000, and I'm going to do times 0 0.0006, and then I'm going to hit equals, and there's the number of students from Germany, so I'm going to write that down, eight. 1940 says how many more students were from Canada than the United Kingdom okay so this is tricky again because I have to do all that converting first and then I have to find out how many more so again my number that I'm starting with is 14,900,000 and I'm going to multiply by the percentages in the table, but I'm going to move my decimal two places to the left first. So Canada is 0 0.15 and the UK is 0 0.05. So again, let's move the decimal two places, UK, and then I'm multiplying those red numbers that I came up with by 14,900,000. So let me do that. But the question, again, was how many more students are from Canada than the UK? So I have to do what? How many more says subtract? So I'm going to do 22,350 minus 7,450. And I'm going to use my calculator. And I got 14,900. So the answer to number seven is going to be 14,900. Okay. Number eight, would it be appropriate to display the data in a circle graph? Explain why or why not. So remember, a circle graph has to add up to how much? A circle graph has to add up to 100%. Look at those percentages in the chart. If I added all those numbers up, would that equal 100? It would not equal 100 because we're talking about teeny tiny decimals. Okay, so a circle graph would not be a good way to display this data. It, it doesn't equal 100, so it doesn't work. If all those numbers were bigger percentages, like 20% and 30% and 15%, and those all added up to 100, then I could use a circle graph. Okay, last one. Would a bar or line graph be more appropriate to display these data and tell me why? So, remember a line graph is just plotting data points and connecting those dots to see the ups and downs. So if we were plotting how many students came from Germany over the course of 10 years, that I could use a line graph from because now I'm seeing, oh, more students came from Germany in 1998 than in 2000, and I'm kind of comparing the years. But since we're comparing a bunch of different countries in only one year, a bar graph is going to be more appropriate. So if we put all this data on a bar graph, we could easily see which country the most students came from. So number nine, we're going to want to use a bar graph. All right. Email me if you have any questions. Feel free to watch the video again, and I will see you next time.